Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll go through some of the main newspapers here in Spain as we have been doing in recent times. Today we'll be having a look at La Vanguardia, we'll have a look at El País, we'll have a look at El Confidencial and we'll have a look at RTVE, the state broadcaster, see what is happening there and then we'll go to the comment section and check out a few of the comments from yesterday's video. So let's get straight into the news. Today starting with La Vanguardia, we haven't looked at this newspaper before, we normally look at El Mundo but a bit of a change today and we'll get a Catalonian point of view. And the headline reads, Las Comunidades se blinden para evitar el éxodo en Semana Santa. So Spain's autonomous communities are shielding themselves to prevent an exodus at Easter time. Now this, as we know, is one of the big debates in the country at the moment. Should the country open for that Easter week or should it stay closed? That's the question that a lot of the autonomous communities are asking themselves. We saw yesterday that Madrid wants to be open for that holiday period, but of course it's going to depend on the other autonomous communities. And they're not sure whether some of the other autonomous communities, especially the Valencian community or Andalusia, want people from Madrid going there for that holiday period. Madrid said yesterday that if the weather is good, it's going to be very, very difficult to keep people in Madrid, and that's what they are worried about. Now we'll go back into the news and see if there's anything else that catches our attention here. There's an article here about an Italian woman that has been accused of setting that police van on fire the other day. We'll click on that one and we can see here la italiana accusada di attaccar la furgoneta della guardia urbana. So the Italian lady accused of attacking the urban guard van. The Italian press has identified her as Sara Casiccia. She's 35 and she's from Turin and she's been based in Barcelona for several years. She's part of a group of eight people with the same ideological nature that the Mossos de Esquadra in Catalonia have already arrested. If we scroll up a little bit, we can see a picture of the lady in question, and apparently she belongs to an anarchist group. So there we go, the police finally starting to put some names to the faces of these urban terrorists, as they are being called here in Spain, people that have been rioting and looting, and as we just saw, setting police vans on fire in Barcelona. And the lady in question, not Spanish, but an Italian who has been living in Barcelona for some years. And the other thing is that she's not as young as some of the other people that were causing the disturbances in Barcelona. She's 35 years old. Now we'll leave La Vanguardia, we'll go to El País, see what is happening there, scroll up past the car ads. And we can see the main headline that El País is going with here on the left. Los contagios en las residencias de mayores caen a cero en cinco comunidades tras la vacunación. So there have been zero infections in nursing homes in five autonomous communities after the vaccination plan started. So good to see that the vaccination plan here in Spain is working and having the desired effect. And as we can see there, the infection rate in nursing homes falling to zero in five autonomous communities, which, as I said before, is good news because nursing homes here in this country were devastated by the pandemic. Now we'll scroll up a little bit here and have a look at this article about Castilla-La Mancha and we can see that Castilla-La Mancha pide el cierre de Madrid en Semana Santa para evitar los viajes. So Castilla-La Mancha calls for the closure of Madrid at Easter time to avoid travel. The Canary Islands has also ruled out perimeter confinement and the Mayor of Madrid, Mr Almeida, is asking the central government for a national response for the holiday period. So Castilla-La Mancha Madrid's main neighbour to the east and the south, wanting Madrid to close, not to let people out of the Madrid community for the Easter break. And this, of course, is one of the big problems that an area like Castilla-La Mancha has being so close to Madrid, such a big city. Madrid, around three and a half million people, the central part of Madrid, and about six million people in the Madrid community, and a lot of people that live in Madrid come originally from Castilla-La Mancha, from places like Toledo, from places like Cuenca, from places like Ciudad Real, Albacete. And they, of course, are worried that people from Madrid are going to flood their towns and villages at Easter time. And they're right. People from Madrid will flood those towns and villages because, as we know, people from this city do anything they can to get out whenever they have the opportunity. Now, we'll go back into the news and have a look at this article here. We'll click on that one about España and national tourism. And the headline reads that Spain is closed to national tourism but open to Europeans. In January, 274,242 foreign travellers arrived for leisure, while in the interior of the country, mobility between communities was impeded. So again, one of the more bizarre situations that this pandemic has created, people in Spain not allowed to move around the country. We can't go to the coast, we can't go to the mountains outside our autonomous communities, yet people from foreign countries in the European Union can come here anytime they want. 
very, very strange. We've had people in the comment section saying that in places like Valencia, there's lots of foreign camper vans down there, people from the Netherlands, people from Germany, people from France down there traveling around the place. We saw people from Paris coming to Madrid to enjoy the freedoms that we have here. Yet, as I just said, we cannot travel around the country. So very, very strange indeed. Now we'll leave El Pais, go to El Confidencial, scroll up past the advertisement. We'll have a look at the health data and we can see the different autonomous communities around Spain and how the health situation has improved. For example, if we click on Murcia, we can see that they're now down to 91 cases per 100,000 inhabitants in the last 14 days. Extremadura now down to 51 cases. The Canary Islands just over the 100 mark at 105. The Balearic Islands now down to 74. And Madrid bringing up the rear at 273 cases. And Madrid wants to open at Easter time and allow its citizens to freely roam around the country. Now we'll leave El Confidencial, we'll go to the state broadcaster, see if there's anything interesting here. There's an article there on the left also about the Easter break. Andalucía pide a Sanidad criterios claros y comunes para todas las comunidades en Semana Santa. So Andalusia is also asking the health department for a clear and common criteria for all the autonomous communities at Easter time. There's an article here in the middle about how many people passed away, unfortunately, due to COVID in nursing homes. So we'll click on that and have a look. And it is that the government has published after one year the first official death toll in nursing homes here in Spain, and it is 29,408 people. So a huge amount of people, unfortunately, that lost their lives to COVID-19 in nursing homes in Spain. And the government finally deciding that it's a good time to publish this data one year after the pandemic began here in Spain. So a little bit late in my opinion. Now we'll leave the news there and we'll go into the comment section. And we'll have a look at this one here from Fenster. Stuart, I understand why the UK is your biggest holiday market, or rather you are theirs. We are in California and are looking to get back to Spain soon too. Have you heard anything about a green corridor or other scheme for the United States to Spain? Yeah, hi, thanks for the comment. And the answer is no, I haven't heard anything about travel between countries like the United States and Spain or any other country outside the European Union for that matter. We saw yesterday that they're trying to work out some type of green corridor for the UK and Spain and other European countries, I imagine. And we also know about the COVID-19 passport that people will most likely need if they want to come to the country. There have been a few comments in recent times similar to yours, but I just don't know the answers, unfortunately. I'm not sure whether there's any information on the US embassy site here in Spain or the Spanish embassy site in the USA. I'm sure they would have relevant information information if there were any. And if anybody has any information on this topic, please let us know in the comment section below, because I'm sure that there are a lot of people in the United States, Canada, and countries like that that would like to come to Spain this year if possible. One here from Michael Stewart, thanks for your update. I read on a UK newspaper site that the EU vaccination passport scheme is to be extended to the UK, mainly because the EU countries such as Spain, Greece, and Italy all need UK tourists back. Yeah, hi Michael, thanks for the comment. You're right, countries like Spain, Greece, Italy, Portugal do need people from the UK. That's a matter of fact. A huge amount of money comes into these countries from tourists from that country. And as I said yesterday, Spain desperately needs those tourist dollars, something like 18 billion pounds in 2019, if I remember correctly from what I said yesterday. Spain, as we know, is a country that has a huge tourist industry. I'm not going to say it's the only thing that the country has because people tell me in the comment section all the time that Spain is very diversified. But tourism in some parts of the country, especially on the Mediterranean coast, it is very, very important. I'm not sure of the exact percentage of GDP in some places, but if you go to places like the Canary Islands, I'm sure that it is more than 50% of GDP in that particular part of Spain. Countrywide, it's around 15%, but a lot more when you go to those tourist areas. For example, Benidorm. And that is why countries like Spain will do everything in their power to get people from the UK back down here on holiday this year if possible. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you on the next one. Hasta mañana.